Jeff and I had contemplated flying to Popham this Saturday, especially as the weather forecast was promising. However, a quick glance at Flight Radar 24 demonstrated that there were already 16 aircraft in the circuit and the day had not even begun. So we opted to drive instead, feeling it might be a little safer. This did however mean that we got stuck in the typical rubbernecking traffic jam around the pile of rocks that make up Stonehenge on the A303. Of course Jeff also insisted on filming this. Once we got past this bottleneck, the journey was plain sailing with blue skies and fair conditions. We are excited about attending the Popham Microlight Trade Fair this year for two reasons. Firstly, our very good friend and Jeff's aviation mentor, Mark McClelland, is to receive an award for his services to aviation and we want to be there to support and celebrate with him. Secondly, as COVID restrictions ease and public confidence builds, we are anticipating that this event would be even more special this year. As we drive to the venue and are directed to a parking space, our excitement builds as we see how well attended the event is. Even Jimmy, our little dog, picks up on our anticipation. We let him have a good sniff around and try to burn off some of his nervous energy by walking him around the huge grassy parking lot. This gives us an opportunity to absorb the atmosphere. After the social isolation of the pandemic, it feels really strange to be mixing freely with so many people again. We put on our festival-like wristbands and make our way towards the inviting sights, sounds and smells. Our first stop was at the Aeropract stand where we saw the A32 Vixen. Now I really love the look of the aircraft. I think it looks beautiful. And dare I say it, I like it almost better than Charlie Golf. We spotted YouTube's Golf Rockstar 22, who had naturally gravitated towards a single-seater flex-wing aircraft. Although they are not my preferred method of flight, you can't help but appreciate the feeling of freedom they must bring. A Microlite trade fair would not be complete without the obligatory C-42 and Sky Ranger aircraft. Two excellent examples were on display. The African bird KFA Safari was on display with featured panel gaps. I assumed to aid engine and occupant cooling. This aircraft has been made famous by YouTube's Thomas Morrow. One of the big themes of this event was electric aircraft and Pipistrelle had an excellent demonstrator on display. We were so happy to see that Luke Williams managed to complete his bright green Kermit Eurofox in time for Popham. We were lucky enough to have seen this project at various stages of development and are impressed by the build quality and attention to detail of the aircraft. Luke's father Steve proudly opened the door of the Eurofox for us to see inside. Steve and Luke Williams and their team also built the Sportstar. Jeff fell in love with this aircraft, but we have neither the money nor hunger space for another aircraft. And even if we did, I would prefer a high wing plane, as I think it gives a better view from the cockpit. Nonetheless, it is still a very beautiful constructed plane. The instrument panel looks almost the same as in our Eurofox. From the Eurofox stand, we then decided to go Eurofox hunting and found some examples, both old and new. We think that Yankee Golf made an appearance in our YouTube video documenting our trip to the fly-in at Kitty Hawk. The sports cruiser was pointed out to us by Brendan Digney, who tells us that it is one of the finest examples in the country. Although the open cockpit two-seater Sherwood Ranger biplane inspired Jeff to get back into aviation, I am so pleased we finally chose the closed and heated cockpit of the Eurofox. We sat by the runway and enjoyed the sunshine and a little plane spotting for a while. 
We want to extend a huge thank you to everyone who approached us to say hi and also talk about our channel. We are truly touched at how many people watch us and find our videos entertaining. We made our way to the main pavilion to watch Mark receive his award. Here's the Ethan Eagle Trophy winner here. It goes to Mark McClellan. When Old Sire and was no longer available, Mark spent uh, a lot of personal time and money relocating his club, and his club nominated him for the award. It's the award for getting things done, and we'll send it off to him. Someone's looking at me. What are you doing? Can we get that? Can we get that? Yeah. What is the half? Yeah. No, me. Mark McLaren. Oh, are you Mark McLaren? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stand here. This is, this is, this is all punishment. When Old Sire and Stick was no longer available, Mark set about finding a new home for his club, working tirelessly and not even letting a worldwide pandemic get in the way. He never mentions the physical, emotional, and financial cost of his search and instead takes the award in his club has been full again with the sound of people and laughter. You're a true ambassador for our sport. I'm not really accepting this for me. I'm accepting it because you'll know this and anyone who's achieved anything in the sport will know. You achieve it with the people who are around you and behind you the support you get. On your own, you get nothing done. Um, on Wednesday, unfortunately, one of our airfield owners uh, came to their funeral, but at least they got to see all we touch. Um, I'm accepting also for them and their support without them, we have nothing. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe as we really appreciate your support.